All right, well, time to get started with a little review of geometric series. In our previous lesson, we discussed a sequence and a series. So to review here, a sequence is simply a list of numbers with a pattern. And a series is the sum of the terms of the sequence. So very simple, if my sequence is 2, 4, 6, 8, the only difference between the, the sequence and the series is now instead of those commas, I'm putting plus signs because the series needs to sum them. So 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. So hopefully between the last video and tonight's video, we get down the difference between the sequence and the series. So again, just a little bit of review. There are two types of series that we're familiar with. Um, arithmetic was the one we covered in our previous lesson, and tonight we're going to hit geometric. Now, things we've already talked about about both of them, which we do have to have memorized. So again, this is a great time for flashcards, um, but you do want to make sure you know these down. These are just things you talked about in Algebra 1, and we did review them last week. We have an explicit formula for arithmetic and an explicit formula for geometric. Now, they're very similar. Arithmetic, remember, comes from the word arithmetic, which simply just means to add, and geometric means to multiply. Okay, so I always start with a sub 1, whether it's arithmetic or geometric. Again, arithmetic meant to add, so the next thing you put is a plus sign, where geometric meant to multiply, so you put a time sign. When you have an arithmetic, you have a common difference for your d times n minus 1, and in geometric, it's the ratio raised to the n minus 1. And then in recursive, Remember, we just called the, up the previous term by saying a sub n minus 1. Arithmetic meant to add the difference. Geometric, very similar. You call up the previous term, a sub n minus 1, but geometric means to multiply by the ratio. And then don't forget, you always want to state the first term in those recursive sequences. So we're going to get a little practice now. But before I dive into my first example, I really want to talk about that word sum. Okay, so we have talked about arithmetic sum. Um, and that's the sum of our series, of course. And basically what we said is there is a formula, but we can always find the sum using sigma notation. From n equals whatever the first term may be to whatever term you want, and then you put your rule here. Okay, and we talked about the little cheat method on your calculator where you hit alpha window, I believe, and you can find the summation button. Now geometric also has a sum. So basically, anytime I see sum, I can use that sigma notation and say n equals 1 to whatever number, and then I put again my rule here. In geometric, it's a sub 1, the ratio to the n minus 1, whatever that formula turns out to be. Now, there is a formula that goes with geometric. We can say s sub n for sum equals a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Now, here's the good news. Remember, just like we did in arithmetic, we gave you this formula, but we said you could basically use summation notation every time, and that goes the same for geometric. Here's the formula, but you can use summation notation every time. Now, our exam actually gives us this formula, so I'm going to practice using both tonight, um, just because you will see this formula on the, the actual reference sheet. All right, so I'm going to try to cover the three things that we've talked about. Well, two things we've talked about, and one is the new one. So A, write a recursive formula. B, write an explicit formula, and then find the sum of the series. So here's what they give us. The first term is 3, the common difference is 4, and there are 15 terms. So right off the bat, my question to you is, is this arithmetic or geometric, and what gives it away? Well, I'm hoping you're saying arithmetic, and the reason I know that is because it, let's box this in on our paper, highlight it, get that highlighter going. It's asking for a common difference. Okay, so that tells me it's arithmetic. It uses the D, the difference. So let's write down what we know. We know the first term is 3. Um, I could figure out a bunch of terms. I'm going to figure out maybe two more. It has a difference of 4, so what does that tell you the next term is? 7, good. And then 11. And then it keeps going up by 4. I'm simply just adding 4 every single time. And I could do this by hand if I wanted to, but I do know that there are 15 terms. Okay, so it says write a recursive formula for part A. 
So the first thing you do when you write the recursive formula, remember, is you have to give the first term. So a sub 1 equals 3. Okay. And now if you look back in your notes, there's a rule we had to memorize there. So now we simply say a sub n equals the previous term, a sub n minus 1, plus the difference. And we said it has a difference of 4. Okay, part B says write the explicit formula. Okay, so we simply say a sub n equals a sub 1, which is the term 3, the first term, plus the difference, which we said is 4, times n minus 1. <coughs> Excuse me. Now I'm just going to clean that up for a moment and say, okay, a sub n equals 3 plus 4n minus 4, a little distributive there, a sub n equals 4n minus 1. And you should be able to do this fairly easily. Again, this is, you know, the review part from Algebra 1. And like I said, we covered it last week several times. So again, we want to make sure we have those formulas memorized. Now, part C says, find the sum of the series. Okay, so the second I see that word sum, I'm saying, okay, I need sigma notation. I know that I'm going from the first term to the 15th, it said. And now what am I summing? Well, I'm summing my explicit rule that I just found. So I am summing n4 minus 1, or 4n minus 1. And again, if I were you, I'd just be going to my calculator um, and typing this whole summation in. Um, so I'll just kind of say it out loud here. It was second window, for those of you that have that updated calculator. Second window, and you see the summation. Um, typically, we use x when we type it in, x equals 1 to 15 of 4x minus 1, and get your answer. Um, but we do want to make sure that we actually add on the calculator and get that sum. All right, let's try a second one. Same directions, write a recursive formula, and explicit, and then find the sum of the series. This time, they say the first term is 3, and the common ratio is 2, and there are 15 terms. So again, arithmetic or geometric, and what gives it away? Hopefully, again, your gut's saying, okay, I see the common ratio, therefore, this is geometric. So again, all that simply means is that I'm multiplying. So I'm going to write a few terms out. The first term is 3, and I'm multiplying by a 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, times 2 is 12, times 2 is 24, and I could keep going all the way up to 15. Or I'm just going to stop there and use the formulas. So write a recursive rule. All right, so part A. Remember, you have to state the first term, so a sub 1 equals 3, and now you call up the previous term, so before n would be n minus 1, and because it's geometric, I'm now multiplying by the common ratio of 2. That's simple. Part B says write the explicit formula. Okay, so I know a sub n equals a sub 1, which is 3, times the common ratio to the n minus 1. And again, those are just things we have to have memorized by now. All right, part C. Now it says find the sum of the sequence. So remember, instead of 3 comma 6 comma 12, it's actually 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24, dot, 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 all the way out to the 15th term. So again, because I see sum, I'm going to make my sigma notation from 1 to 15. And then you just say, who am I summing? Well, I'm summing this explicit rule. 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. And again, we're going to let our calculator do all that work for us. So those are pretty straightforward. So let's get into some uglier ones. Find the sum of the geometric sequence. So again, I'm going to highlight this word sum, and that's going to tell me I can either use the sigma notation or the formula. Now, in order to use sigma notation, again, I have to write out my equation. So what do I know? Well, because it says geometric, I'm strictly looking for something to multiply by. Okay, not add. Some people the other day were trying to say, well, that has a plus 2 and that has a time 2, so it's a little bit of both. That can't be the case. It's either all adding or all multiplying. So find something that works all the way through. Um, again, I know geometric because it says multiplying, so I'm going to say times 2, times 2, times 2. It looks like that's working. So I know I'm going to multiply that by 2, multiply that by 2, multiply that by 2. I could say, without a doubt, my ratio is 2. Without a doubt, I can say the first term is equal to 2 as well, right here. Okay, now I have to be able to tell the, the calculator when to stop adding. I want to add how many terms. 
Well, from the first term to by golly, I have no idea to whatever term that turns out to be. And then I need my rule here. Well, remember, it's a sub 1 times the ratio to the n minus 1. All right, now here's the hard part, guys. You've got to figure out what that term is. Could you sit here and multiply by 2 and write them all out till you get to 2 to the 10th? Of course you could. Um, but we want to find a more sophisticated way. So the first thing I ask myself, okay, is what is 2 to the 10th? What number am I even trying to get to? And 2 to the 10th is 1,024. So watch this scratch work off to the side here. I know my explicit, and this is what you should be writing down, is a sub 1, which we said is 2 times 2 to the n minus 1, and I need that to equal 1,024. So I simply have to solve this equation. And again, we've just spent 10 days solving these equations, so they shouldn't be too terrible to solve for. This exponent, box it in, is only on this term. So your gut's got to say, I first need to divide out the 2. So I'm simply going to divide both sides by 2. So I get 512 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Okay, so this is exponential. I'm going to show you two ways to solve this equation. Two ways that we've already talked about. Okay, and I want you to write them both down. And again, we'll use what's easier for you. Situation number one is you could get common bases because these are exponential. So I'm saying 2 to the n minus 1 is equivalent to 2 to what power? What can I replace 512 with? Well, I believe 5 to the 9th is, I'm sorry, 2 to the 9th is 512. Common bases say once those are equal, you kill those, and you say basically 9 equals the n minus 1, add that 1 over, and n equals 10. Okay, that was method number 1. The second method, and that's the method we've really been focusing on, is just solving with logs. So we can say 512 equals 2 to the n minus 1. I know it's exponential because the exponent's a variable, which tells me I just take the log of both sides. So the log of 512 equals, when I take the log, remember that whole exponent comes down in front, n minus 1 log of 2. Simply divide both sides by log of 2. And again, we should be writing both these methods down, because you won't always be able to get common bases. I'm going to grab my calculator and just type this in to verify I'm doing it correctly. So I've got the log of 512 divided by the log of 2 gets me a total of 9 equals n minus 1, add that 1 over, and n equals 10. So no matter what method I went with, whether it was common basis, since it was possible, or logs, I do know that that 1024 turns out to be the 10th term. So I'm simply going to put a 10 up here. And then I'm going to very carefully type that in my calculator to get that answer. So the summation from n equals 1 to 10 of 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 should get me a sum. And again, hopefully you're verifying on your own calculator so you're not confused tomorrow of 2046. Now, I'm going to solve the same exact question using the sum formula. If you look back in your notes, we said they're going to give you a formula that you are more than welcome to use. Um, typically, I think summation notation is just as easy, but let's practice with the sum formula. That said, the sum of the n terms is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus the ratio to the n all over 1 minus the ratio. Now, I kind of did all the legwork, and I already know what all these terms mean, so I just want to be clear. a sub 1 is my first term, so we said that's a 2. We know our ratio is 2, so that's 1 minus 2. Now, the n, that's what we just solved for. We, no matter which formula we do, we had to solve that equation, and that turned out to be 10 all over 1 minus 2. And if you carefully use your fraction tool and type that in the calculator, um, you too should get 2046. Okay, so again, you have a preference, whatever formula works best for you. Um, typically, we like summation, but maybe if you have the old TI-83 and you don't have the summation button, maybe you'll want to use this formula. All right, find the value of the geometric sequence shown. So 6 plus 12 plus 24 plus some bunch of numbers up to 768. So remember, it can't be both arithmetic and geometric. Pick something that works for everything. So I would say I'm multiplying by 2 each time. So my common ratio is 2. My first term is clearly 6. 
And then the tough part is just figuring out what term 768 is. I'm just going to write my rule down. So a sub n equals a sub 1 ratio to the n minus 1. a sub n equals, so let's see, that's 6 times 2 to the n minus 1. And I know I need that to equal 768. Okay, so again, whatever formula works best for you. Is it going to be solving exponentials or solving uh, common bases? So either way I go about it, this exponent's only on the 2. I'm going to first have to divide out the 6. So that gets me a 128 equals 2 to the n minus 1. Um, so again, I'm going to split it. I'm going to show you both ways one last time, just to review here common bases. I need to rewrite both of these with a base of 2. So that's 2 to the n minus 1 stays there, and 2 to the 7th gets me 128. Then I just simply kill those common bases, 7 equals n minus 1, and n equals 8. Solving with logs, remember, you just simply, once you isolate that base and exponent, take the log of both sides. So the log of 128 equals, bring that whole exponent down, log of 2. Log of 128 divided by the log of 2 gets me a nice 7 equals n minus 1, and again n equals 8. So whatever your preference is, two ways to do the same thing. So I know I have n equals 8 terms. So I'm going to say this is the sum of n equals 1 to 8, and my rule is 6 times 2 to the n minus 1. And again, type it in your calculator and get your answer. Um, if you wanted to use that other summation method, Sn, and remember, they're going to give you this formula, they say, on the formula sheet. So it's the first term, which is 6 times 1 minus 2 to the 8th, all over 1 minus 2. And either way, we should get that same exact answer. So we actually posed this question to you when we started exponentials on the first day. I think we asked you, uh, maybe not about Bobby, but maybe about an allowance. If you were to get one penny on the first day, and then on the second day get two pennies, on the third day get four pennies, and so on, would you be a millionaire at, after 31 days? So let's think about it. It doesn't really sound like you would be. Let's see, if I start with one cent on the first day of school, so 0.01, our first day of the month, and I'm going to basically double that because I want two pennies on the second day. On the third day I want to double that so I want four pennies and then I want eight pennies. Geez, it really doesn't sound like you're gonna win here. How much would you have? What would the total amount of money you have be after 31 days? Alright, well, a millionaire seems far-fetched but let's see what happens here. We know that this is a geometric sequence, not because they told me, but basically because the amount I have each day is doubling. So because it's doubling, my ratio says I'm being multiplied by 2. My first term is 1 cent, so 0.01. And I know my n value, it says I'm going to go for 31 days. So I'm going to do this for 31 days, and I want to total it all up, add it all up, and see how much money I have. So the first thing I'm going to do is write out my formula. a sub n equals a sub 1. 0.01 times the ratio to the n minus 1. All right, and all I need to do now is find the sum of that from 1 day to 31 days, starting with 1 cent on the first day and doubling it every day for 31 days. So let's go ahead and grab our calculators and carefully type that in. Let's see. Holy smokes, I get 2, 1, 4, 7, 4, 8, 3, 6, point four seven. Throw some commas in there. Holy smokes, not only would Bobby be a millionaire, he'd be a multimillionaire. That's $21 million, $474,836.47. That is the power of exponentials, guys. So, if you need to play a good trick on a parent here for an allowance, Starting with one cent a day and doubling that just for one month, you would have $21 million at the end of that month. Some food for thought there. Exponential modeling. 
Well, we look forward to some great practice and we'll see you tomorrow.